students and welcome back to the video lecture series of software engineering. Today's topic is sequence and class diagram. I am your instructor Ms. Shruti Rawal. Let us study the first diagram that is sequence diagram. Now what do you mean by sequence diagram? Sequence diagram basically shows the object interaction arranged in the time sequence. So sequence diagram is similar to activity diagram. It shows the activities performed by the objects. So it shows the interaction between two objects that are the activities performed by the objects but against a time sequence. So the basic importance of sequence diagram or the name arrives from the time sequence it is following right. It needs to follow a time sequence and a proper logical time timing order. Now a sequence diagram is basically a two dimensional chart and this chart is read from topmost uh, chart that is top left to right bottom. Now the objects participating in the interaction are shown at the top of the chart right. So there will be boxes in which you are depicting the objects which are interacting with each other in the sequence diagram and there will be a vertical dashed line associated with every object in your sequence diagram which indicates that this is the overall lifetime of the object right now let us study what are the different symbols of sequence diagram so here you can see a rectangle indicates the object right uh, and there is a dotted ver vertical line which is associated with it now you may wonder that ma'am in this uh, rectangle you have written two things separated by a column right so the uh, the name which i have written after colon that indicates a class name right so uh, you have to write the class name as well as the object name this vertical dash line which is attached to the object uh, indicates the overall lifetime of the object uh, here also you can see again that there is a object name and class name so mihir colon student now mihir is an object of which class of student class so I can write both of them that is I have to write the object name colon class name right. Similarly if you don't know what is the object which is interacting and if you are only uh, aware about the class you can write this anonymous object because only the class name is known object name is unknown so you may altogether skip the object name if you want that is if you don't know what is the class and if you know only what is an object name you can skip the colon part all uh, right so you can write the object name only and see uh, see the what is the sequence of object interaction so this is the basic uh, symbol of sequence diagram but let us study different notations which are associated with sequence diagram and how to create uh, a sequence diagram so here you can see that i have uh, an object and the class name again I have taken the example here is an object and student is the class name uh, you have a vertical dash line but here you can see that there is a rectangle vertical uh, line somewhat solid bar type of line which is associated with this object and lifeline what it is it is basically the activation of the object now vertical dashed line indicates the lifetime of the object but during the whole lifetime of the object it is not possible your object is always interacting or is in an active state. If you want to depict that this is the time in which the object is activated actually and it starts the interaction you have to show this bar that is object activity starts over here and whenever there is an activation lifetime it will be this sort of solid bar right vertical solid bar also whenever you are completing this bar it means the object is stopping its activity it does not mean that your object lifetime is completed the activation lifetime may be completed and during the course of this vertical dashed line you may again start the object activation and you may again stop the object activation right so when can you not start the object activation when you have this symbol that is when your object is expired or you explicitly destroy the object right so in between this you can start the activation of the object you can stop the activation again you can start the activation stop the activation so activation lifetime is shown by this solid bar whereas the object's lifetime is shown by a vertical dash line so i hope this uh, notations are clear the next thing that we are going to study is how are two objects 
interacting with each other that is how is message passed between one object to another object message sequence in message in a sequence diagram so here you can see i have taken two objects and from two classes so that is mihir uh, from class student and you have autumn 06 from class course right so uh, how is the interaction taken place via symbol arrow so the first activity is uh, performed by uh, this object that is mihir right so it is invoking which uh, method request enroll and uh, to which object it is passing the message exactly to the autumn 06 course object it is passing the message that basically it is requesting enrollment for this course right now for requesting enroll as soon as it gets the message it has to search that whether the uh, requested enrollment is available in this course or not right so this is a self message which this object is passing to self class right after searching there will be a, a possibility that yes you have to confirm the enroll so this is the message which is being passed from uh, autumn object to mihir object that is confirm enroll right so this is how the message sequence takes place the first message is from mihir to autumn the second message is self message that is a function which is called here right and uh, the third message is from again autumn to mihir so this is the message sequence in sequence diagram and these are the two objects which are communicating to each other via message passing uh, the next uh, thing that we need to learn in sequence diagram is there are some control information which you can uh, have while communicating or passing the messages from one object to another let us study what are they for that we again have three objects right so first first object is mihir from class student the second is autumn 06 from class course and the last one is anonymous object from class course we are not able to get what are the what is the object exact object that we are going to communicate so we have written only the class name over here now mihir is uh, that is a mihir object is passing the message request enroll again to autumn 06 autumn 06 is searching inside right so there is a self message which is being passed again confirm enroll is being passed from autumn 06 object to mihir object but with a variation you can see over here that initially in the first uh, ppt that we have seen there was no vacant in the rectangle bracket but here we have this vacant uh, information what does it mean it means that this is a control information when will this confirm enroll action or message take place only when there is a seat which is vacant in this particular course right so if uh, it is not vacant then this message will not at all pass from this object to another object so when you have such conditions which you want to say you can write it into the rectangles before the message itself right the next is again me here is passing some message to uh, the autumn 6 uh, object that is Mihir wants to get the course so get course method is called and uh, getting the course involves course getting of uh, iterating all the courses that are available right so there is an iteration mark you can see that there is an iteration mark star which is associated with this uh, method get course so here you can see that send this message if condition is true so that is also one of the control information if condition and here also there is a control information send message to all the course object right so there is a loop which is being created and for looping or iteration you use this star in the sequence diagram right so this was a uh, control information and this was all about sequence diagram now let us study the uh, next diagram that is a class diagram now what does a class diagram identify class diagram identifies the majority of the domain classes for objects that are manipulated by the actors it also uh, identifies attributes and methods for the classes also it identifies how one class is interacting or related to another class 
right so basically it describes the structure of system classes it describes the attributes or property related to a particular class it describes the method or operations related to that class and the relationship among the objects or you can say classes right so this all are the things that are associated with class diagram this is the basic symbol of a class so you can see the class is divided into three portion the first portion or the topmost portion is uh, for writing the class name the actual class name for example if you are writing teacher right if you have a class teacher you can write teacher the next portion or the middle portion is dedicated to the attributes or properties which are related to that class for example if you have a class teacher what can be the property of teacher yes teacher's name can be one of the property so name is a property or attribute related to this class and the last portion or the bottom most portion is dedicated for the class methods right so what are the different operations that will be performed by teacher class that you have to write inside this portion uh, for example teacher has one method teach right so you can write this teach method so this was the symbol of class diagram now let us see one of the example of class diagram uh, here you can see that uh, there are different classes which i have identified country practitioner client report test and admin so this is uh, related to some medical sort of domain right so these are the classes identified for a medical sort of uh, project in which uh, you have different association between classes now what do you mean by associating class here you can see that there is a client class right and we know what is the structure of a client class the first portion you have written client name in the second portion or the middle portion you have written all the properties related to client and in the third portion you have written all the operations which are performed by class client so in the property you can see that what is the format of property plus that is an access modifier that you have specified so plus is for public uh, hash is for protected and minus is for private you can use uh, according to your preference whatever property access modifier you want to specify for example i have written plus for public right so client id that is the name of the attribute colon uh, after colon i have written what is the data type which is associated with this property that is for example id is of type or data type integer then i have written integer uh, client name is of type uh, string so i have written data type string so what is the basic format of writing a property the first is you have to specify access modifier that is is it public private or protected after that immediately you have to write the property name what is the property or attribute name after that you have to write colon and after colon you have to write what is the data type of that corresponding attribute right so you have to list down all the attributes related to that particular class and in the last portion uh, you have method and you can see the methodology in which we write the method also again uh, method also can be specified via public private or protected so there is an access modifier which is associated the method name immediately is followed uh, by the access modifier after colon you are writing the return type of the method whether it is returning some sort of thing and if it is returning what is the return type right for example the first return type i am written i am writing void it means it does not return anything the next thing i am writing is boolean so it is returning boolean type of value right so whatever thing it is returning you have to write the return type okay so this is how we write properties and methods in our class now let us study how is this class associated with another class so here you can see that i have a class country and i have a class client so we know that client stays in a country so i have just an association a simple line which i have uh, between country and client and i have named this particular line that is what is the relationship between client and country that i have to specify so every class which are associated with each other has a plain line but that line should be named right for example client checks the report so i have written checks 
also client undergoes test so i have written here undergoes right uh, also admin manages practitioner so i have written manages so also client is registered under practitioner so i have written registered under right so now you get an idea that every class which is associated with any other class you have to uh, associate with a simple straight line but that line should be named perfectly right now you may wonder that ma'am okay we have the class structure we know that one class is associated with another class via this symbol it should be a named line but what is this one zero dot dot star etc now this is basically uh, showing the cardinality it means whenever you are associating two classes you have to ask a question from this class to this class that for example if client uh, and country if you want to specify the cardinality between them what is the numeric value which is associated with these two class so uh, if you are taking one client uh, an individual client in how many country at a time can one client reside obviously at a time one client can reside in one country so i have written one now if you that one you have to write over the opposite side whenever you are asking the question from client to country write it in the opposite side of the client now you have to ask the question from the reverse side from country to client right so you have to ask that in one country how many client can reside so that question's answer is zero client may reside or more than zero client may reside so zero dot dot star indicates zero or more right similarly if you are taking this class client and practitioner ask the question from client's perspective that uh, how many uh, if one client is registered under how many practitioner so you know that one client is registered under one practitioner right so that is a uh, the uh, answer which is written is one whereas if you write uh, in the reverse direction that one practitioner registers how many client we know that one practitioner may register zero client or he or she may register more than zero client so zero to more right so this is how you define the relationship between the classes that is association between the classes cardinality between the classes and uh, this is how you can get the overall idea of system or domain classes and how they interact with each other via class diagram okay so this was all about class diagram and this was all about today's lecture thank you